Massachusetts Congressman Jim McGovern joins us live from Washington. Let's go on the record. I saw evil, Mr. Speaker. Our country came under attack, not from a foreign nation, but from what, but from within. The congressman was just steps away when a violent mob surged toward members of Congress. Right now, the Rules Committee chairman on the chaos and the uncertain days ahead. Let's go on the record. From WCVB Channel 5, the inside word from Washington to Beacon Hill. Today's newsmakers are going on the record. And welcome to OTR, everyone. I'm Ed Harding, along with New Center 5's political reporter, Janet Wu. And as you can see, we are live inside Studio C this morning, and we do keep our social distancing protocols in place brought on by the pandemic. We also want to take you live right now to Washington, D.C., where the area around the Capitol building is largely sealed off. A massive military presence after the chaos and violence of January 6th, some 20,000 and National Guard troops have been deployed to secure the Capitol area as the nation prepares to inaugurate Joe Biden as the next president of the United States. That'll happen in the middle of the week. It is a scene that few could have imagined for a peaceful transition of power. And also live to Washington, D.C. right now, we're joined by Congressman Jim McGovern. He witnessed the storming of the Capitol. He played a key role in the second impeachment of President Trump. You just heard him from the floor of the House. Congressman, thank you for being with us. Happy New Year. Great to see you this morning. Happy to be with both of you. Congressman, thank you for being with us. Uh, it's a bit eerie to see Independence Avenue so empty behind you this morning. It really is. I mean, uh, there are more troops here than there are in uh, Afghanistan and uh, Iraq combined right now. Uh, and uh, I've never seen anything like this. Even after 9-11, I haven't seen uh, such a uh, deploy of force uh, around the Capitol. It's really sad, quite frankly. Um, let's get on to what we know is going to be happening, uh, but let's l reflect first on what happened a couple of weeks ago. Uh, the Capitol Police were warned days before the riots and that violence against members of Congress was likely on January 6th. The National Guard was requested but not granted. FBI and D.C. police say they were not told. Can you sort this all out for us? What do you know at this point? Well, I, I can't sort it all out because there are lots of questions that still don't have answers to them. But we will find out the answers, and there will be a top-to-bottom review of everything that happened. Uh, I am just, uh, you know, uh, relieved that more people weren't harmed and more people weren't killed uh, as a result of what happened um, on the 6th. Uh, I mean, we have never seen such a uh, infiltration uh, of the Capitol grounds since the War of 1812, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. And um, it was, uh, you know, it was, it was a, a scary moment for everybody. Congressman, there, there are words that investigators, uh, that perhaps some of your colleagues uh, gave tours to people before. Do investigators have the name of legislators who held those tours the day before the insurrection? And if so, why? Yeah, well, I've, I've heard those reports, but I, I, I don't know who gave tours and who didn't give, give tours. But let me just say this. There are some of my colleagues on the Republican side who gave oxygen to these conspiracy theories, you know, who gave comfort to these protesters, who cheered them on, quite frankly. Uh, and uh, it is inexcusable what happened. Um, five people are dead. Uh, so many more are wounded. Um, you know, a Capitol Police officer was killed. Uh, one, I mean, you saw the videotape of one being dragged down the stairs and, and being beaten. Um, mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and, and again, I, I mean, the, the, the people who work up here, the, the, from the cafeteria workers to the uh, people who work in the parliamentarian's office to all the support staff, all these people were here uh, at this moment. Uh, and this happened because Donald Trump and quite frankly, some of my Republican colleagues have been ginning up this big lie for quite some time, uh, and it's inexcusable. So so based on, on, on the passion that I'm hearing from your response, would you recommend censure or even expulsion for any members found cooperating with the insurrectionists either before or during the invasion of Congress? Well, first of all, some of these people should have the decency to resign because they have uh, basically disgraced uh, their office uh, and they have uh, shown contempt of this institution. But if look, if there is hard evidence that uh, that, a, that a member of Congress uh, helped plan this, you know, then we should move for expulsion. It's a tough bar to to, to, to get to because you need a supermajority mm -hmm. to expel somebody. But it but at a minimum, a censure. I mean, I mean, this is there's no excuse for this. This is a day uh, not only for the you know people up here on, on Capitol Hill, but a sad day for our country. I know you're still uh, waiting for information on, you know, investigator from investigators looking into all of it. But in your mind, how is how how likely is it that rioters were able to infiltrate the building with help from the inside in the days previous? And I'm thinking, of course, of some of the panic buttons that were disconnected in offices like that in uh, Congresswoman Ayanna Presley's office. 
Yeah. I, Again, I mean, there are lots of questions, and I don't know the answers. And so it would be irresponsible for me to say, you know, this is why this happened or this is why that happened. But there are lots of questions. And clearly, uh, the, uh, the security here was, was uh, insufficient uh, for what, what uh, came, uh, what would happen on, on the 6th. And, and quite frankly, there were lots and lots of warnings, uh, you know. Um, and, um, you know, we, we created a Department of Homeland Security was created after 9-11 to basically be able to coordinate intelligence, obviously it, it's not working. So uh, this was a massive failure. So Congressman, let, let's talk about what's ahead. So how does Congress juggle a trial in the Senate without pushing the spotlight off Joe Biden in the opening days and weeks of his administration if the incoming administration is gonna reboot the country? Yeah, look, the United States Senate can walk and chew gum at the same time. Uh, they can pursue the impeachment case against Donald Trump, uh, and they could also confirm his uh, Joe Biden's appointees and be able to move on to other things. But look, to, to, to not uh, pursue this, to, to, to turn a blind eye to what happened, I mean, that really paves the way for this happening again. Uh, this was an insurrection. This was an attempted coup. Uh, this was a violent attack on the nation's capital, a desecration of this building. These people came here yeah. uh, to destroy property and to kidnap and, and potentially murder uh, elected officials. Uh, so uh, you, this is, you can't just excuse this. We have to do what's right. There has to be a consequence. And I hope that the Senate will uh, will vote to convict him. To, to, to that very point, sir, do, do you think that 17 members of the Republican Party would actually cross lines and, and convict now it would be former President Trump by the time the trial begins? I hope so. I mean, I, I hope so. I mean, the, the evidence is overwhelming. The whole world is seeing the tapes uh, and more tapes keep on coming out. And you hear what these uh, protesters, I don't even want to call them protesters. They're homegrown fascists. They're domestic terrorists. You hear what they're saying. They're saying they were here because of Donald Trump. I mean, a lot of the people who were on, who were in the Capitol that day thought Trump was here uh, and uh, were looking for him. And they were saying we are here because of Trump. Now, my worry right now, quite frankly, is that in the few days that Trump has left, that he'll try to pardon some of these people. Including himself? Be, I, I, I think he will pardon everybody, including himself or his family. But I'm worried about him pardoning these domestic terrorists mm -hmm. who are responsible uh, for what happened here on January 6th. I want to ask you, um, Congressman, about the uh, facial recognition issue. It's been sort of driving this investigation. There already was um, a lot of political debate over the police use of the technology because of false identification rates among blacks and Asians. It's dis disproportionately higher. Where do you stand on it? Do you think that there is a place for it, and are you comfortable with it being used for these investigations? Well, look, I mean, they, this can't be the only uh, uh, evidence that is used to identify people. I Look, facial recognition is something I have a lot of uh, issues with, quite frankly. Um, and as you pointed out, it has been used in a way uh, that has discriminated against communities of color. And we know that it has been faulty in some of the uh, identifications it has made um, in past protests. But uh, look, and there's also privacy concerns as well. But look, we need to figure out how to make sure uh, that we prevent these kinds of events from happening in the future. Uh, and that means focusing on, uh, on, on things like facts and truth and holding people accountable uh, who spread lies and conspiracy theories, uh, you know, holding media uh, uh, accountable for uh, when they promote these uh, conspiracy theories, some of these uh, social media platforms as well. I mean, all these things have to be talked about. This was a radicalized population, uh, and we need to figure out a way to de-radicalize pe uh, uh, these people, uh, and, uh, and that's where our focus ought to be.